Have you ever played a game that you were so proud of that it moved to the top of your list of the best games you've ever played? Well, that just happened to me. Now, I don't really have a list per se that I keep track of. Just kind of mentally, I have some games in the back of my mind that I'm proud of. But this one, I have to say, probably belongs at the top of the list. It featured four brilliant moves and an incredible checkmate to finish off the game. And to have this happen in a three-minute game... It's pretty rare. I'm very proud of this one. I'm going to give you guys a chance to pause and try to find the brilliant moves yourself. This was kind of the critical position where all the fireworks started happening. But let's go ahead and take a look. All right, so here we go. D4 and E5. Now, unfortunately, uh, for whatever reason, a lot of the best games that I have come out of this terrible opening, which... Um, it's... I don't know. I don't know what it is. But the England Gambit is not really a great opening. And especially this one, if white knows what they're doing, they're going to play knight f3, they're going to bring this bishop out somewhere, and it's just kind of not very good for black. But when they take, which is what I generally hope for, I do get a nice aggressive start to the game, primarily because I get to develop first. Notice how even though I'm black and I moved second, because I sacrificed the pawn, I'm the one who starts developing my pieces. On top of that, both bishops are ready to go and white still has to kind of waste a move to get this bishop out. So you can see how I can gain some quick tempo early in the game. So I do like when I get a chance to do this. My opponent played c4, which really doesn't help their cause of developing their pieces. So I was happy to see that and just continued developing. Knight to c6, knight to f6. And here my opponent played bishop to g5. Now, it's kind of an annoying idea. They're pinning my knight, and it looks like maybe knight to d5 or knight to e4 is going to happen and attack that knight. And I don't really want to go back to e7 with my bishop for two reasons. Number one, I've already moved the bishop, and now I'm wasting a move to go back, giving away my advantage. And also, I allow a queen trade, and once the queens go off the board, we're closer to the end game where white has the extra pawn. That's really not what I want to do. So it's kind of an annoying move, and I said, well, I can't really worry about that right now. I have to just continue with my plan of developing quickly, try to get my queen to e7 and castle queenside so that this rook can be involved. That's one of the other benefits of this gambit. Uh, you have both of these files that you can use to put your rooks on, and that can put a lot of pressure on white's king or queen, um, depending on how the game goes. So let's keep going. E4 was played. Again, kind of an annoying move here by my opponent because this pin, right? Normally I would be able to just take that because I have two pieces attacking it, only one defending. But in this case, my knight is basically uh, out of, you know, doesn't, doesn't count because it's pinned. All right. So I played queen to e7, which, like I mentioned, was a move that I wanted to play anyway because I wanted to castle queenside and get my rook here. But I have the added benefit now that I'm pinning the pawn uh, and attacking it as well. So kind of a, a dual purpose move. My opponent played f3, which does defend and it is a little bit annoying, but they're not developing, which is kind of a, a key feature in this position. So I did castle and now I'm pretty happy. I've got all four pieces out. I've got my queen on a good square. I've got my king safe to the side of the board, as well as this rook lined up on white's queen. All right, so it's starting to look pretty good. And here we kind of get the first real critical moment in the game where there's a lot of tension and I need to find a good move. And this is kind of when you play these aggressive openings, once you get your pieces out, this is usually the moment in the game where you have to find something. Because if you don't, yeah, you're going to get into trouble. So before I say too much, it's uh, my move, black to play. What do you think I played here? There's really only one good move for black in this position. Well, if you had a chance to look at that, the move is bishop to b4 check. Now, why is this a good move? Well, if we look at the pin and we look at the knight, I kind of have a problem here, right? Because my queen's under attack. This is obviously what white would like to do. Take my queen with check. And I can resign if I let that happen. If I try to just retreat, maybe queen e6, um, the problem is it allows white a couple of things. Number one, it gives them time. They could play a move like bishop to e2 just to kind of block off this, start getting some pieces off. Or they could even make a trade here. I think bishop takes f6 and then do something with their queen or again move the bishop. And the game goes on and white is starting to, you know, basically simplify and go into an endgame where they're up a pawn. So that's, I don't really have time for that. And so the move is bishop to b4 check primarily because of two things. Number one, it opens up the rook. This is very important because now notice white doesn't even really have the option to trade for my bishop because they lose the queen. 
Well, that's one thing. And then the other point is it's forcing white to make a really tough decision. They don't really want to go backwards with their bishop because then they lose the pin. They lose any kind of you know, aggressive opportunities that they have. And I could simply take here, taking advantage of this pin, right? So something like this, followed by rook takes. And I mean, white's in, in trouble. But the only other option for them is to move the king. And if they move the king to f2 or e2, well, they both have their own problems. King to f2 allows a tactic here. Knight takes e4 check, which unleashes my queen on the bishop. So for example, something like this um, would be an idea. There's also like queen to c5 check is an idea. Bishop to c5 check, taking advantage of the king. So many different moves that I could play here. But my opponent decided to avoid all of that and played king to e2. And here is where I played my first brilliant move in the game. If you would like to pause, what do you think I played? If you had a chance to look at that, the move is rook takes d5. So what it comes down to is... This knight is still causing me problems. It's still attacking my queen. I still have to worry about this pin. Um, it's also kind of blocking off the file. And just it's just too strong, right? And so sometimes, um, you know, normally you wouldn't want to give up a rook for a knight. But in this case, the knight has to go, okay? So I sacrificed it. White recaptured. And I followed it up by another brilliant move. If you would like to pause, what do you think I played next? You had a chance to look at that. The move is bishop takes e4. So again, we get one of those kind of critical moments where I need to keep the pressure up because a lot of times in these situations, if you even slow down for one move, that's all your opponent needs to solidify the game and, and you basically lose your advantage, right? So for example, imagine if I were to said, okay, my bishop's under attack. I guess I should retreat. Let me just go back to g6. Watch that eval bar. You see that? In one move of just kind of a defensive retreating move, it's over. White simply takes my knight. I lose another attacking piece and white is totally winning, right? So I've got multiple threats here. You could also say, you know, what if I just move this knight somewhere? But again, it's not really putting the pressure on white. They can simply bring a rook over or even just trade. There's a lot of moves that are popping up that are fine for white. So only move that really keeps the pressure up is bishop takes e4. And yes, I'm giving up a lot of pieces. I gave up a rook for a knight. Now I'm giving up a bishop. The idea is that white can't really take this. Because if they take this, my queen is coming in, and now white is in big trouble. If you look carefully, there's not a lot of options for the white king. He can either go over to f2, or he can play bishop to e3. If he goes to f2, I'm going to play, I was thinking of bishop c5 check. Looks like queen f5 is maybe a little better. No, bishop c5 check is the best move. Yeah, so I was going to go here. The, the bishop can't block, or I simply take, so the king has to run out. And then there's checkmate. Um which I didn't see in the game, but I had a feeling that if I got this position, surely there was going to be a checkmate that I could find. It turns out that it's queen to f5, um, which is an interesting move. You're threatening to bring the knight in, and then after bishop to f4, you play knight to e5. Difficult one to find, but I think I would have been able to at least come out on top. Anyway, this didn't happen in the game. I'm just kind of showing you the dangers um, if white would have captured the bishop. So because of that, white decided to trade here. I took back. Just because, not really because I cared so much about the bishop, but because I needed my queen to not be attacked, right? Because this is a major threat that I have. And if I leave that there and try to do something with my bishop, you know, the bishop can always just take my queen, right? So I needed to take it. So I took it. And here white played d6. And I didn't quite see the idea of this move. It was actually a clever move by my opponent. Uh, one point is if I take with the queen, then they're going to trade queens and they're very happy about that. If I take with the bishop, well, then I'm retreating my bishop. It's not in such an aggressive position. I thought I could simply take here and really white didn't accomplish anything. It's not entirely true, even though this was still a good move. They did accomplish something because now queen to c1 actually pins my knight. And the knight is no longer a threat to attack the king, as well as this idea of queen to e3 to defend the king and a potentially, you know, offer a trade. Okay, so for example, if I were to play a move like bishop g6, which I was thinking about, white could block with the queen, and I don't want a queen trade, and the queen's actually doing a really good job of defending the king. So because of that, uh, I found a different move here, which was my third brilliant move in this game. If you would like to pause, what do you think I played next? You had a chance to look at that. The move was rook to e8. And basically what I'm doing here is saying, okay, 
I kind of have a threat here, but because of what I talked about already, queen to e3, it's it's kind of limited. It's it's not really that powerful. But once I get the rook and the queen lined up together, well, now it becomes much more powerful. Because now th this queen e3 idea doesn't work anymore. Even if white plays it right now, I have bishop d3 just sacrificing the bishop because my queen can come in and now I can get checkmate in a few moves, right? So it takes away that idea from white as well as gives me lots of opportunities if the king ever tries to retreat here. These guys are ready to go along with the support of the bishop. Lots of tactical ideas open up by bringing that last piece into the attack. Okay, so there you go, third brilliant move. My opponent played king to d1, trying to get out of the discovered check. And here, I played the fourth brilliant move in the game. If you would like to pause, what do you think I played next? All right, well, if you had a chance to look at that, so let me explain, well, I'll show you what the move was first. Bishop to d3. And now I'll explain how I came up with, with playing this move. So if you look at this position, my primary threat here is, is queen coming down to e1. Uh, that, that would be checkmate if I could do it. Now my bishop's in the way. So ideally, something like moving the bishop out of the way, coming down for checkmate is what I would like to do. The problem is when I go here, white's going to play like bishop e2 or knight to e2. And they block that off. And I can't take it because it's defended. And the game goes on. Now, it's still a good position for me. You can see I'm still winning. There's a lot of good moves that I could still play. But I don't have any immediate checkmates. And I have to, you know, the game goes on. The other thing I was thinking about was taking here with check because then I can go here next move. The problem is the knight captures, which by the way, covers that square. And I did think about sacrificing my queen, but it just doesn't quite work because after I go here, king back is check. I'm forced to take this. And at the end of the day, I'm out of pieces. You can see white has a lot of pieces and I just, I ran out of steam. I don't really have anything, okay? So I was noticing that, all right, I wanna move my bishop somewhere, threaten this, but this is a problem and this is a problem. So I said, okay, well, if I move to d3, it actually solves that problem because now if white tries to block like this, guess what? I could just take it. So that looked pretty good to me, but the question was, what happens if the bishop just takes me? I'm just giving up my bishop for free. Can I get away with that? And whenever you're trying to think of a sacrifice like this, you wanna make sure you have a concrete follow-up, especially as you start to run out of pieces. So I've already sacrificed my rook. Now losing the bishop, I'm, I'm gonna run out of pieces eventually. So you need to usually kind of find a concrete line that you can calculate and see that you come out on top. And I did see one. So uh, my opponent captured the bishop. And before I tell you what I played, if you would like to pause, what's the finishing line here to win the game? All right, we've got a chance to look at that. It's the move queen to e1 check. And this is a forcing mate in four, forces the king to run over here. Then we play knight to d4 check. And if you look carefully, the only place that the king can move to is back here on b1. It does put me in check, but I'm okay with that. I simply trade the queens and then the rook comes down, checkmate, the king has nowhere to go. Beautiful finish. The last three pieces that I have are all playing a role in delivering the checkmate and white never really got to use any of these major pieces. Really nice game. I'm proud of that one. Lots of brilliant moves. And to find this, you know, finish at the end in a, in a three minute game, it's pretty rare for me. And so definitely proud of that one and wanted to share it with you guys. Let me know what you think. And as always, thanks for watching. Stay sharp, play smart, take care.